Wiggy time on the fly. What's up, everybody? Sean Wiggins here alongside myself, Ref Hansen, which is me. Sorry for the camera move. We're taking you back July 7th, 2001. And uh, first of all, big shout out to, there's Scott Matthews souping the crowd up, and there I am pointing to the belts. This is a tables, ladders, and chairs match. The Hit Squad taking on Dixie and Insane Dragon. Look how good looking I was, man. I was not, well, you can't see me. There's the belts. Excellent camera work by Modtron Productions. There I am, look at that hair. I should have been doing customs. I should have been wrestling girls in intergender matches doing customs at this point, but I was too dumb. I would have made a lot more money. I wanted to be a big star. I was like, I'll referee and I'll be a big star that way. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? It's more like 2010, 25. What's 20 over five? Is that better than 20 over 10? I'm not sure. I'm rambling. Anyway, um, big shout out to John Maher, who looks a lot like a young, like an older version of uh, Showtime Sean Sheridan. I, I don't, I, it's weird. I've never seen John Maher and Showtime Sean Sheridan in the same place at the same time. Greatest manager of all time, Johnny D right there. Uh, he just liked, commented, and subscribed. It did. He did all three. Like I asked everybody to do. Like, comment. Is that any guapo? Oh, there's Monster Mac and Mafia to hit squad. So yeah, Showtime Sean Sheridan. I mean, John Maher. Uh, subscribing to my channel. Love you. Miss you. We got to get together. Um, this is, and you know, I can't emphasize how awesome this time was in my life. And yeah, I didn't have a lot of money and, you know, things were, I hadn't had life figured out. But the best, when you're in the good old days, you don't even know you're in the good old days. Um, I've shown, that's a friend of Moff's, actually. He just slapped. And there's Fake Hat Man, the late Johnny Bellswinger. Um, who he just, and there's Moff ripping up someone's signs. Yeah, he knows them too. There's Hope and that's, she, she was a rat. She was cool. The white, the white girl, I forget her name. She was cool as shit. Um, I just called her a rat, but she was a rat. That's what she did. It's fine. We love Johnny D. Johnny D's son or cousin or sister made that sign. Oh, maybe it was then. Uh, there's Hope. Miss you too. You two are great. I don't know what I'm saying here to Monster Mac. So you could see the ceiling. I don't like that. Um, and there's Mafia, Monster Mac, the Head Squad. I actually did not drive them to the building that night, which I usually did, but I didn't. Philadelphia, they always came the night before. I had a girlfriend at the time, so I'd always stay at her house. She lived about halfway from my house to Philly, so I would stay there, and then we would make a whole day of it. So anyway, um, what the hell was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Yeah, but these were really were the good old days. I said something to Moff. I don't know what I said right there. This is going to be a very, very hard-hitting, very, very stiff match. A lot of live rounds are probably going to be fired in this one. I haven't watched this match in probably 20 years. And there's the tag team champions, Youth Gone Wild, Dixie and Insane Dragon. They came out to the theme song, Youth Gone Wild. That was their entrance music by Skid Row, one of my all-time favorite songs. But I don't love it enough to hand over the copyright claim to YouTube, so this is getting muted. You're only going to hear my voice. I am not going to pay you, Skid Row, Sebastian Bach, even though I've seen pictures of you recently. And yes, you, you are older than me, but treadmills would not hurt. Or move to a warm weather community and go for a lot of walks, a lot of jog, get a Fitbit, you know, maybe uh, soup yourself up and uh, Dave Mustaine too. So he put a lot of weight on. There's Bell Swinger got his hat back. Um. So yeah, Dixie and Insane Dragon here. You've seen on my tapes Dixie be a heel. I just put up a match in Dixie versus JT Jobber. This is obviously before that. Dixie does eventually turn on Insane Dragon, which led to one of the biggest feuds. It should have been one of the biggest feuds in the indie scene. Sorry for the shaking. Should have been one of the biggest feuds on the indie scene. It was not because Jersey All Pro wasn't that slick. But they uh, are legit. The two guys you see, Dixie and Insane Dragon, are legit brothers. Shoot brothers. Unlike Undertaker and Kane. Um, but they are real brothers. The Browers. They lived in Bayonne at the time. And they had a great feud. Scott Matthews doing the old NWA entrances. But I'm just going to talk over everything. Um... Jersey All Pro blundered that feud as they had them 
Oh, he just said the former tag team champions, and that set Moff off. Um, they blundered that feud by having the big blow-off match at Seaside Heights. And I think Jersey All Pro Wrestling's thinking is, well, we'll have it in Seaside Heights, and then we could say that the feud carried around everywhere. We had a big show at Seaside. Well, the, the only place that match mattered was Bayonne. The whole, you know, that was the whole story. And they blundered the shit out of that, which, you know, we say what you want about Fat Frank, but he needed an idea guy and he just didn't have one. He thought he was the idea guy himself and he did have a few good ones, but, you know, not nearly enough to carry it somewhere. I've said this time and time again, Jersey Old Pro Wrestling should still be running today and they should be one of the biggest federations in the country. And I don't, I'm not saying WWE or even I got to put AEW in there, obviously, but uh, Jersey Opo should be one of the staples of the Indies. Like they, it was a good setup. The logo was great. Modtron Productions was fantastic. They had a good roster. They had good rings. They had a fan base. They had banners. Um, not as over as CZW in that like, but you know they were what they. Ooh, I just farted. Um, anyway, six minutes in, and um, they haven't even touched. So this is going to be a hell of an upload. I hope you guys enjoy this one. All you cats and kittens and girls and boys and girls and men and women and parrots who are watching this. Hit Squad taking the early offense. I just think they look good in orange. Orange and black would have been good for them. Ooh, nice. I hate that cell where they, the guy, Dixie just did it, where he sits up and kind of looks stunned for a minute because it looks too comical. This one quickly goes to the outside. You know, Dixie and Insane Dragon, I trained with them. We were in the same training class. Dixie did start earlier. But um, that's what part of me wishes I kept working. I wasn't as good of an athlete as those two in the ring. They were just too good in the ring. Boy, the Insane Dragon could fly. He was such an athlete. Um, gets to... Ooh! <laughs> Chair shot early in this one. But it is a tables, ladders, and chairs match. Normally, I would hate that. But And there's Johnny D. You gotta be an idiot. Don't put your hand on the guy. You can talk shit, but there's Dixie now working on Monster Mac. And boy, Monster Mac, eh, I'll lay off Monster Mac because he'll watch this and then, you know, bitch about it if I say anything negative. But Moff is net. Well, oh, that would have looked good. Moff caught him. And Moff goes to throw him in oh, after he tells the fans to move. Joey Matthews was famous for doing that. Who else was famous for doing that? Guillotine Legrand? Did he do that? Monster Mac now backdrops Dixie, but he doesn't pay attention. He drops his own partner, Mafia, in the process, and he's not paying any attention. Excellent spot called. I don't know who called that, but it was very brilliant. See, look, Insane Dragon was a good enough athlete where once Monster Mac did that, he could have launched him onto the top rope, but he didn't. And now Monster Mac. Look, they're just tossing him around here, but that's how good of an athlete... Uh, the two of them were Montrem all over the action. Dixie used three rolls of tape on his arms there. God, July 7, 2000. There's the same show. I put up a match of Jerry the King Lawler against Dirty Don Montoya. You can see that on my channel. Um, if you scroll into my videos, it is on there. Dixie, oh, God, I don't remember a lot of this. And right there, you see me kneeling down uh, to Dixie. I'm a Tinsane Dragon. I'm either giving him the next spot or I'm shoot asking him if he was okay. I would give everybody the office because a lot of guys, on the indies, I started in 99, guys have started hitting each other harder and taking weirder bumps. So I'd always check on the guys. Um, and it was a shoot. I remember telling American Dragon Brian Danielson that. And he's like, huh? And I'm like, ooh, there's the chair. There's those unprotected chair shots. Ugh. Put your fucking hand up. What are you doing? Hey, Danny. There's Danny in the background taking pictures. Danny, good friend of mine. Danny, if you're out there, I miss you. I hope everything's well. Life gets in the way. You just stop talking to people. Um. And uh, Dixie. Good Lord. Mafia taking four chair shots. Not selling shit. He's like, screw. Look at that. He just cut him off. Oh, there's another hit. It's five chair shots. Nice move by Insane Dragon. The cell wasn't great, but Monsamac doing his thing. 
Actually, you know, as a big guy, I don't mind that sell. I take it back. Dixie still has that chair after blasting Moff six times. I would have took that out. What about a chair shot to the back? Nice. See, Monsonek did pull some nice shit out like that. I really think if he never talked, never said a word during the promos, he would have been so over. Because he was a big guy that could do some cool shit. But I thought when he talked, it ruined it. Ugh. That's the seventh chair shot. And it takes seven to get Moff to bump. Seven. To get Moff to bump on a chair shot. Unbelievable. Dixie sitting in the bag again. Everybody in this. Moff was in the business, what, two years at this point? Ooh, with the ladder. Uh, two years, I think it was. He got in a little earlier than I did. And Dixie got in a little way. Uh, no, not way early. A little early. And Monster Mac was in, I think, 97. See, so everyone's two or three or four years in. So there's, you know, there's no coach, no agents in the back. <clears throat> See, I like that. Nice, nicely done by Moff there. Putting over Moff the wrestler. Not exactly the person. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if JP could have had an agent. I know indies don't have agents, but it would have been nice if... Oh, maybe not seven. How about one? And sometimes the ladder works with you, and sometimes it doesn't. But there, it's starting to work with them. And look at Dixie and Insane Dragon matching black and blue. Nicely done. Kind of old heart foundation. And Dixie, what? God, giving it to his brother. Dixie. Good. Oh, and there he takes a big muff. After eight chair shots getting blasted with the ladder, has enough intestinal fortitude. Didn't gig at all. I mean, doesn't bleed at all. So I would have took that out. Still on all this. I'm, I'm, I'm shitting on it because it's just what I do. I shit on myself. Like, look at me dancing around. I'm, oh, get your hand off the top rope. Referees out there, never touch the top rope. Pretend it's on fire. Never touch it. Ever. My hands are all over it like an idiot. Moff now. Souple. Nice. I would never want to take it, but it always looks good with a suplex on the ladder. Look at me waddling around the ring. Insane Dragon, his offense was sweet, too. And again, again, another guy, Insane Dragon needed to stay. He got a good job, I heard. I think he's working on the docks. I think he was in a union. I think he has a union job. Uh, last time I saw him was at Homicide's 25th. I didn't get to spend a lot of time talking to him. Wish I did. Anyway, they're both up now. They're both going for that tag team gold. This is what it's all about. Six, seven minutes into the match, and they finally go for the belt. The belts, which is fine. I always want to see a ladder match start where the guy just immediately runs outside, grabs the ladder, and goes for the belt. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? But I don't mind the back and forth wrestling before guys could. Dixie, oh, that's a weak attempt. He saw, oh, nice. That's what he did. See, sometimes the ladder works for you and sometimes it doesn't. That double underhook, nice. Right on the head. See, Dixie could sell his ass off. I just hate to sell where... I sit up and now I'm all confused because I took a big bump. I'd rather you hold the back of your neck or something. These fans don't know what they all these all this stuff feels like. Well, now they do. They're all workers. Moff picking up that ladder like a sack of potatoes. He was going to drop it on Dixie, but I think Monster Mac is telling him to go climb for the belts, and he is right. And oh, no, what he did is he inadvertently set up the next spot for Insane Dragon. And folks watching this for the first time, watching my channel. Nice, Spear. Oh, I farted again. Watching this for the first time on my channel. This is the old ECW arena. It looks insanely different today. It's called the 2300 Arena. And this is July 2001. So yeah, the last ECW show here was eight or nine months before this. And... The building kind of looked identical at this point than it did in the last ECW show. So this kind of is the real ECW arena. It just had officially the name was Viking Hall, right? That was the first one. And then, uh, whoops, sorry about that. Then the new Alhambra. And then misses the one spot, gets him with the second. Oh, good Lord. 
See, I would have, I, if, as soon as Moff called that, I'd be like, I, I see where you're going with that, but how about we try this? How about an axe handle instead? Quick story, um, Jack Evans, those of you know Jack Evans, famous in Mexico, I think he worked in AEW. Anyway, he hurt himself doing a, like a triple 860, some crazy ass super spin move. I forget what he called it. And uh, I was sitting in the back in Chicago at Ring of Honor. And it was me, maybe one of the other refs, uh, Carrie Silken, Gabe Sapolsky, and Daniel Bryan. And we're sitting there in the back. <clears throat> and uh, someone said Jack Evans was hurt. And Daniel Bryan went, he is? He got hurt? And Gabe's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was wrestling last week and uh, he did a blah, blah, blah. He said whatever move he did, some stupid, crazy, flippy move. And he's like, when, when he, on, all he had to do was just do a 450 or a moonsault and he would have been fine. And, but instead he did his move and he got hurt. And then Daniel Brown goes, uh, yeah, or like maybe an axe handle. <laughs> we all started busting out laughing. Daniel Bryan, silent, secret, funny guy. Uh, Monsa Mac, now going to the top shelf. Ken is, I don't know if he should be up there. Oh, last second. Dixie pulls his brother out of the way. See, Monsa Mac should have just belly flopped that right on the table. Eh, he's probably afraid the table wouldn't break, which is possible. I don't know, not with that girth coming down, boy. Still look good. And as a referee, this always sucked because having to move the debris from the ring... Drop kick them into each other. Sabu once then taught me whenever there's gack in the ring, like crap, just someone uses a chair, take it through underneath the bottom rope somewhere so it's out of the way. I tried to do that one time with Tommy Dreamer in a match against Shane Douglas. And uh, it was a chain and I kicked it inadvertently too hard and it rolled all the way outside the ring. And Dreamer snapped. He just yelled at me. He went, what the fuck? I needed that or whatever. And I was like, sorry, sorry, sorry. And Shane, incredibly, was outside the ring and like kind of threw it back in. The fans didn't notice. Oh, nice move. Nice offense. And, uh, you know, I was saved from getting yelled at by the Dream. Ah, screw Tommy Dreamer and his little homo man bun. Um, he's got more hair to me, so that's kind of why I'm ticked. His bald spot is a little bit... A little bit bigger than mine, but he's like eight, nine years older, ten years older. So, um, I'm probably gonna beat him in baldness. Anyway, bald is sexy. I'll make it sexy. Dixie going for that sunset flip to Monson Mac doesn't work. Does work with the ah. See, that's why that movie is the shits. And I don't blame Monson Mac for that because you don't want to just take a sunset flip to the concrete floor and smack your head. It'd be great if you did that. And there's a table there. A really good match. You guys are taking a lot of abuse. These TLC matches, I know you kind of throw psychology out the window because it is a hardcore match. Nah, he set it up right in his burning hammer. Moff, um, I, was, I could sit here and burn him all day, but what, uh, I thought his burning hammer was the best. Best that I've ever seen, anyway. And Moff, I always had the good idea. I think I brought it up. The, ooh, a couple kicks. The, honestly, I don't know how he's still standing from those eight chair shots he took. Roaring elbow by Dixie. He saw that on a Japanese tape, and it might have even been Monster Mac or Homicide, I think, who told Dixie to start using that, and he did. I mean, Roaring Elbow is a finish. Top of the ladder, oh, nails the leg drop, but the cameraman didn't get it, or it was me that fucked it up. No, the cameraman didn't get it. Sad, my drum, you're one glitch. Insane Dragon now, Froggy Splash, and hits home. Moff taking a beating, because Monster Mac's on the outside. Nice trading of offense by these two ball clubs. And teams. I said ball clubs. You know what? I got baseball in the brain. Red Sox just went six in a row. Or two in a row. You know, it doesn't matter how much many they won. Red Sox are great. Monson Mack went a chop. Nailing the insane dragon. Um, I wonder what my new subscriber, John Mayher, thinks of this. Dixie, oh, nice. Dixie went for that. But there's that shaky Devon Dudley bump. And not good shit here out of these teams. Everything, these two teams did work well together. They spent a lot of time together. And uh, Dixie and Insane Dragon were good listening to instructions. Nice with the burning hammer. That could do it. Cover him. Oh, you can't cover him. It's a ladder match. 
And for the dude sitting in the front row with the hat on, Bell Swinger, who is dead now, deceased up in heaven. Heaven Championship Wrestling sitting in the front row up there. So I'm going to give you a shout out. Uh, WXW made him a referee and then he started going all over the place and he couldn't really handle it. Good guy though. Good dude. Oh, they're doing the Dudley bit. What are they freaking doing? And for I will say this about Mafia and Monster Mac. And they're, the lights went up, so you know what that means. They're going up. They're going out. <clears throat> they called this before the match. I mean, they uh, improvised this. Um, the Dudleys got to the WWF in what, late 2000? No, before that. Beginning of 2000. Like late 99. So there's uh, the September 99. Oh, maybe they did it first. Because uh, they started wearing tie-dye. But, uh, I mean camo. Not tie-dye. Camo. And Mafia Monsmack wore camo all the time. And the Hit Squad kind of made that their staple. But ah, the Dudleys kind of did it first. I remember there was talk of, did the Dudleys kind of see the Hit Squad and just steal it. There's the Eagle's Nest. They definitely didn't. By the way, I'll put Bubba and Devon over. They're cool as shit. And on top of it, they're one of the legit greatest tag teams of all time. They don't need to steal anything from anybody. They were great. Uh, Bubba, what a mind for wrestling, too. He should be a lead agent somewhere. He's too uh, knowledgeable. Ma, and the, who's that walking around backstage? Pay attention. They're in that eagle's nest. Way up at the top of the new Alhambra. I mean, Viking Hall at this point. There's Mantra. I'm trying to get it. What's he going to set up for? I don't... The run... Oh, the running power bomb Through two tables. See, Johnny D, get the fuck out of there. You can jump up and down and cheer, but don't jump over the guy. Let him sell. Let the people see it. Look at me jumping too quick. I should have waited, too. God, the bathrooms used to be disgusting there. They used to be atrocious at that building. They were big. I do remember they were big. And now with both of them laid out, they're not going to be able to stop the hit squad from climbing that ladder. How'd I make it down there so fast? They're not going to be able to stop the hit squad from climbing the ladder and securing both tag team titles. Why did Monson act doing it alone? Both of them should have did it together. Where's Moff? Oh, because Moff just did the power. Never mind. Sean, pay attention. Watch the match. Sorry, Sean. And there's one belt, and there is two. Monster Max secures in both the head squad. Reclaim the Jersey All Pro Wrestling Tag Team titles. There is the greatest manager of all time, if you don't count 70 or 80 other guys. Johnny D. Brag and letting the world know that he is the one who called this whole match and led them to victory. Well, I really do hope you all enjoyed this one. It was fun for me to re-watch this. Uh, haven't watched this in at least 20 years. This match was 21 years ago. Uh, oh, I'm shooting this on June 7th. This was July 7th, 21 years ago. Unfreaking believable So someone who was born this night can legally drink now. Is that some? Or can legally drink a month from now. Wow. God, we're so old. So Dixie and the Insane Dragon, and it wasn't long before, long before, long after this that uh, the tag team broke up, and Dixie and Insane Dragon would start their feud. So for Sean Wiggins, I'm Ref Hansen. Hope you enjoyed this one. Here's another look at the awesome Montron Productions, uh, giving you the end of this match, and now we're getting a little extracurricular activity here. Oh no. He cut a... They, oh, I don't remember this. They cut a piece of his hair. I guess they want him to look like them. Oh, cut the little blue tip off... He used to be the blue dragon off the insane dragon. And now... And this one's over. Wait a minute. There's the SAT. Jose, Joel, and Red. They hit... I mean, the SAT. Hithqua become a Fayuthon. There's Red with the... That beautiful fucking moonsault he did. God, it was gorgeous. And we're going to have a little Spanish fly up in this mug. Oh, you heard me. No. Monster Mac is saying no. He's not going to take it. And he said, yeah, motherfucker, you are. And there it is. Fucking Spanish fly. 
God, I love the SAT, and I love you, Red. Oh, you guys were awesome. You're fucking hilarious to be around. And that led to those guys eventually demanding a tag team championship match. And they would get it. So I hope you really do enjoy this one. And Riva Dirty and Chaff, if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. If there's anything you can do for me, please do it. So for Showmakers, I'm Ref Hans. I hope you enjoyed this one. There'll be more Wiggy Time on the Flies to come. More old school independent matches. More nature videos. More ridiculous, more nonsensical, ridiculous, immoral garbage that I will spew on YouTube for you. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit squad. Get the victory over Dixie and Insane Dragon for the Tag Team Championships July 7, 2001. Awesome. Signing off.